Okay, my name is Darius Asemi. I think I've met almost all of you. I've met a few new faces. How many grand will home Oh, everybody's here. Okay. Uh, all right, Jen, can you read, maybe you turn the lights off? So we can maybe, maybe see the agenda oh, better. We're going to talk about this community, your neighborhood, and what we have planned for South of the Shaw, our park, park development. Item number three, litigation in your community. How many, how many have received, uh, keep on receiving one letter a month from the attorneys in Southern California? No. Uh, how many attended our uh, grand bill 101 in our office? Oh, hands for you, okay. How many purchased directly from us? Majority. Uh, anybody want to hear about the litigation or no? No. No. One person. Raise your hands. How many want to hear about the litigation? About uh, this scam, yeah, I should say the ambulance chasing activity by Southern California. Okay. So there's going to be enough hands. We'll do a quick uh, overview of that. Then we have Captain Farah in the back from the district that can um, fill us in on some public safety issues. Uh, then we're going to close the doors and make sure everybody signs up for GB Wire. <laughs> oh, we have a raffle. What's a raffle? $50 gift card. There's a $50 gift card uh, that's going to be given out in one year from now. <laughs> Delivered straight to your mailbox every morning. Fill out the card on your seat and then uh, make sure you turn it in before, before the end of this week. It should be in about half an hour for the Okay? And then we'll do some QA. So let me just dive into uh, okay, Park West. Let's see. Park West, can you guys see this map? Barely. So this is uh, Gettysburg Alignment. Shaw Avenue is up here. This is our next project, right across from Central Road High School Campus, Grandman and Ashley. That's going to go into development sometime. Fall goes well with the city of Fresno. Sometime early next year. And that's what this uh, neighborhood will look like. Uh, phase one will be a Granville neighborhood, and the Norris purchasing. Uh, Two projects from us, potentially, not in contract yet. Oh, no. uh, so this is kind of basically phase one: the road, parks, trails, and improvement on Grand Avenue. Uh, Veterans Boulevard. Everybody's up to speed on Veterans Boulevard. How many have not heard of Veterans Boulevard? Okay. So everybody's basically up to speed. Veterans Boulevard will connect Herndon, as you all know, to Grand Avenue. And that's the future right away, or where this four lane flyover will go. Connect Vernon up here. Uh, it's as soon as you come down the overpass on Fulton. And it will eventually land at, uh, I'm sorry, it will terminate at Shaw in phase one, eventually will terminate at Grand right? In this area, just at the Gettysburg and Grand Island line. Uh, did we get updated information on funding? Next slide. Got it. Let me skip this. You can't quite see that. I know the person is congestion will be. Okay, right away is all the land in the purchase design is almost 100 percent complete. And the construction is almost complete. They're, they're 10 percent short. I've heard as much as 25 million dollars. As of today. So it's a $138 million project that is lacking about $10 million before we can get, get off the ground. We anticipate that happening in the next two years. Of course, part of the challenge is there's uh, your city council member from this area, Steve Randolph. Everybody remember Steve Randolph? Mm -hmm. yep. uh, he's at, at your county board of supervisors. So he moved, got elected in March, so that there's a vacancy in that spot. And you probably don't know this, but you are all going to have a ballot in your mailbox sometime next week for a special election to elect the next council member for you this area. There's a candidate here that I'm going to introduce to you that we're supporting um, uh, once I go through my presentation. So you'll have a chance to vote. The deadline is August 13th. And that will have a city council member that can actually represent us. 
right now there is no representation for Northwest Fresno at City Council. Did everybody know that? Yeah, no, something, something, yes, no. So we, again, March 4th, that was the last election of this year. So Brandon got elected and he left his seat at Fresno City Council. So basically we're 10 million, at low of 10 million, I've had to hurt as high as 25 million dollars short. Somebody needs to basically drive this project at City Hall in Washington, D.C. and in Sacramento. Uh, I know the mayor is uh, looking at it, he's uh, looking for grand dollars, but we need somebody to aggressively uh, drive this project. This picture is pretty nice dark, but okay. So, can you guys see this from the back? It's a new building that's almost finished. Uh, it doesn't look as ugly as that. <laughs> uh, the lighting is a little bit uh, uh, dark about this picture, but a new uh, Teak Community Center, of which we now fund, which opens up in August of 2022. I'm sorry, <laughs> no, August of this year. So, so next, next month, basically. We're going to send an invite out to all the homeowners with a name. Do we have an exact name yet or not? No, we don't. And they 
go up by inflation on an annual basis. But it was a big hike in 2016. I can't remember the exact dollars, somewhere between five and seven thousand dollars. Don't quote me to that number. Or hold me to that number, but it was a large increase. So as fees go up, costs go up. And in certain parts of town, now West of 99 is up and coming. Veterans Boulevard is going to help the development of this area. Uh, but if cost in this cost to build in this part of town is more is higher than cost to build someplace else, call it the Northeast Reservoir, which is a close unified, then developers will go, gosh, if you build in Center Unified School District, our cost is higher, but our center price cannot, that cost cannot be passed on to our new customers. So what happens as a result of that calculation, less homes get built. Developers, well, home builders and developers are for profit. And if you can't get a margin, then we won't build in that area. So give me one minute. So as as prices, as costs go up, if you can pass that along to your customer, that works out. If you can't pass it along to your customer, now your margins get sweet. So then developers go, should we build in West of 99 or should we build in Northeast Fresno or you know, Central and, and, and East Fresno? And now why should that matter again? Some of you will be in the market for a new home. But as importantly, we all want to see shopping centers open up in this part of town, West of 99. Yes or no? Yes. no? Okay. Um, shopping centers follow rooftops. Shopping centers follow housing. So we need basically people that can afford to go and shop at the shopping centers, right? So you have enough homes in an area, then the shopping centers follow. So until we get that critical mass of enough homes built in this part of town, the shopping centers will not follow. So the more homes get built, and, I, and by the way, the um, city of Fresno is low on infrastructure dollars, so the infrastructure improvements for the area also get burdened by demands. Some of you say, hey, why don't we get a traffic signal at Barstow and Granville? Well, those costs will be paid for that traffic, those traffic signals get installed with new development. If there's a development, if there was a development a few months ago proposed, at Barstow and Grant, some of you may have heard about it, but it got shut down by a planning commission. Uh, but those developments end up paying, paving the road in front, widening the street, and uh, paying into a pot that eventually builds the traffic signal, or sometimes they may be required to build the traffic signal. So at La Ventana, all the improvements on Grant we put in, the median island and all the improvements and that whole avenue with our so, anybody interested in uh, signing a petition to oppose the ICE and 75 work with the petition act? It's in the back. Please. Oh, we have in the back Ashley, our customer uh, care manager, has it. Please uh, see you on the way back. We're on the way out. Uh, I have a question about fees. Sure. Are these fees separate from the bond that was passed for the school? Correct. What's the connection? They are separate. They're separate. So, and there, there's School districts pass bonds to build infrastructure. They also hide fees. And as a, I don't want to bore you with the details. It's a complex math on how to derive those fees. We have a, uh, an issue with the way they've calculated their, their fees. From, from our perspective, there's 20,000 seats. I'm just going to take a minute to discuss that. 20,000 seats available in 1705. They only use 14,000 seats in their calculation. Some, because some of that 6,000 seats are in, in the form of portals. So the, the state formula allows Central not to calculate those additional 6,000 seats. So <clears throat> they can say that they're basically overburdened or they're above capacity. But in reality, they're not above capacity because they have an additional several thousand seats. But they, they, they're allowed not to use those uh, seats in the calculation of those seats. So as a result, they can find it. Year after year. So for now, the most expensive, the highest school fee in the four districts, Sanger, Fresno, we have a, we have a, yeah. yeah, there we go. 
Focus Unified just made the fees last night. They were at 485, they took 515. Frozen Relief has at 380, and the proposed central is 558. They're currently at 525. One of the reasons you don't get too much activity out here is because of that. Any other questions on fees? How many signatures do they need to gather for the application? Do they have like a number? You know, we don't. We're just trying to sh send the school board, uh, 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 you know, a petition signed by as many people. If it was a hundred people, it'd be a lot better than you know. Yeah, fifty. Right. Uh, if you can help help us with that, that'd be awesome. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? And those of you that want to attend the hearing, July twenty third. That's the date. Yes. Yeah. That's second. So July 23rd at 7 p.m. Uh, at the Central High Campus, East Campus, on 3535 North Cornelia. <coughs> President O'Gohan, is that you? Yeah. Okay. I'm sales manager for Granville Homes, and many of you may know me because I might have told you at home out here uh, at some point. So good to see a lot of familiar faces. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about is the Friends Go app. We get a lot of phone calls over at the sales office uh, asking us about, let's say, infrastructure that we might install. Uh, let's say a block wall that maybe has a crack in it or monumentation or sidewalks or trees or that kind of thing. Uh, Fresno has the Fresco app, which is fantastic for reporting those things. So after we build a subdivision, we essentially turn it over to the city for, to the city for maintenance. And at that point, they will go through and take care of all of those items that we need to repair. The Fresco app is fantastic to report anywhere or anything from, gosh, trash not being picked up to graffiti to a down tree to landscaping. And actually, they do a great job of blocking the issue, actually reporting it, uh, reporting it and getting back to you with the status update. So we definitely recommend for those who have not used this, download it on your phone. It's available for Droid and Apple as well. And it will go through their process. They have established you can exactly see where your claim is at. And it's a lot, you get a response a lot quicker than giving them a phone call. So one of the things that I encourage everybody to use because it does get results. A couple stats on there, which I won't bore you with. Any questions on that part of it? All right, turn it over regarding litigation. Cool. Okay, um, so we can both spend a couple minutes and I can answer more questions. So every month, Ashley, is this still monthly? Yes. So first, per, week of <coughs> first week of every month, um, all of our neighborhoods and most brand new, new neighborhoods in Fresno and Globus get supported by uh, this firm. Uh, that's Dean Jackson, their trial, and wait, that's a trial. How many have received those letters? Yeah. You probably, most of you have received it, you probably look at it as, 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 as uh, trash and throw it away. But it comes right here. We're on our 15th, so for the last 15 months, basically once a month. Yeah. Uh, it said, those of you that have attended our Granville uh, Evil Bar uh, seminar at our office, have gone to this presentation. Uh, it's a basically fishing expedition, what we call ambulance chasing by a group of these litigants out of Southern California. Uh, they send out that newsletter, pictures that are not of our homes, claiming there is an existing lawsuit and effective home construction that you should sign up for a lawsuit if you want to remedy. So what they typically do, they file a law, once they have 15 or 20 people, they file a lawsuit. Their typical lawsuit is about $100,000 at home. They claim that they'll take 40% uh, and they share this, they get the balance with the, with the homeowner. Uh, but they fail to disclose that they sue for $100,000 at home. They settle for around $1,500 at home. They take all their expenses out, out to be heard on the homeowners or uh, home builders that have successfully settled these, homeowners that have checked for between 300 and maybe $1,000 more. And of course, unfortunately, the home uh, becomes a lemon from that point on. Because the law claims that every component of that home, that every component of that home uh, is defective, from roof to foundation. 
And why do why do they why do the attorneys make that claim? Because they want the insurance companies of all the subcontractors involved in building their homes to be at the table. So they want to spread the cost of litigation amongst you know 35 contractors instead of just a handful. So they, again, their their litigation claims that every single component from roof to framing to electrical to insulation to concrete plumbing etc. Sales agent, sales manager, and myself. All my contact 
every, everybody that got a grand, brand new grand has received a letter from me with my uh, uh, email address. So let's say we all said, to heck with you guys. Uh, you have an issue, you have a plumbing leak or whatever it is, we're not going to fix it. Then you have a uh, local experience construction defect attorney. I mean, you can go through better business bureau, you can go through contractors, licensing board, but let's say your problem is that you seriously needs to be dealt with immediately. You hire a seasoned local attorney that deals with construction defects and will come in and contact us and say, hey, my client has got a problem, we'll fix it or we'll see. These guys never contact home builders because their intent is not to fix anything. Their intent is just to make people feel scared that they have a problem and, and to the trap them into an advocated lawsuit. And they make a ton of money. So every month they send out tens of thousands of letters to new home owners all across California. We did a calculation, we figured out uh, they make close to the hundred thousand dollars an hour litigating cases. Because they just, they send a letter like this, they get 10 to 15 people to sign up. All it is is paperwork. They may have somebody local, a paralegal, submit the paperwork to the county uh, superior court. You know, they get if they get 15 or 20 times, you know, 500 for 500 dollars a pop. You know, it's seven, ten thousand dollars for a couple hours of work. And they do this multiple times with, multiple, with one person all across the, the state. So they make a, a ton of dough. At the expense of insurance companies, homeowners. Reputation of the homeowners. Okay, uh, any other questions? Okay, next we have Captain Farah uh, joining us to give us an update on public safety. <coughs> and Thank you all for uh, allowing me to be a part of this today. I work for you. I work for you. I'm your captain at Northwest Coast, and we go all the way up to Pine Hill. Some of you have heard this before, bear with me. We go down Blackstone, all the way to Ashland. We go Ashland all the way down to 99. We go 99 out to McKinley and we take it all the way out to the county. So everything from literally Marks and McKinley to Pinedale to Herndon and 99 belongs to my cops. And they do a real good job and real proud of what they do. Could I use more cops? Well, sure. Of course I could. Uh, let's talk about how that's impacting you directly. Uh, the good news is your neighborhood is a much safer place than it was last year. Violent crime in Northwest Fresno is down over 15%. Specifically down, most notably, in the area of robbery and aggravated assault. Um, so that's what's driving those numbers down. Cops are doing a better job of uh, responding to those violent incidents when people are getting hurt. Uh, they're responding code three, you see them running with their lights and sirens from town. Hopefully you see them driving as safely as possible when they do that. Uh, they're getting those calls, they're catching the bad folks, they're putting them in jail. And 15%, uh, I'm not real good at math, last time I checked, that's about one in seven fewer victims of violent crime in Northwest this year than they had last year. And I know those people certainly appreciate that. The problem is, um, we're not doing as well on property crime. Right? So it's a safer place, but it's a less secure place for your valuables and your property. It's no surprise that people come to Northwest Fresno to shop. You are nice people, you have nice homes, and you have nice things. There are other folks that are out there trying to take them. And I had a conversation earlier uh, this evening, I had this conversation several times. While we should be able to leave things in our vehicles, unfortunately, we can't. We should be able to leave our purses, our backpacks, our computers, and our gym bags, and all those things locked in our vehicle, expect them to be there when you're not home. Uh, but unfortunately, we can't. I will tell you, zombies roam the night. You've seen them, and I've seen them on your home video. You're faithful to share those on next door. You're faithful to share those on ring neighbors. You're faithful to mail those to my detectives when we ask for them. Uh, they come around at night. They check door handles on cars. Uh, we estimate that about 15% of our thefts are from unlocked vehicles. About 15% of our thefts. And I get it. Some folks are like, you bet I leave my car unlocked. Why? Because if I don't, they'll break the window. I get it. Property crime is up about 10% in most categories, including burglary, that includes residential and commercial burglary, larceny, which is just a big grab bag of theft. Within that larceny category, vehicle burglary seems to be holding even, but I don't believe it. I just believe there's about 10% of you that are tired of calling me. 
I can add categories I've reported. The window's broken, the stuff's gone, people are like, you know, I'm just getting my window fixed. I don't have time to mess around with the police department. I get it. I understand that fully. Because I'm not just your police captain. I'm your neighbor. I live over at Marks and Sierra, so I might be responsible for policing my home, providing safety to my family and lifestyle. So I get it. There's nothing more frustrating than having a package stolen off the front of your porch. Unless it's watching it live on your own video camera from the comfort of your office, <laughs> surrounded by cops, going, I can't believe this is happening to me right now. So I get it. I get it. My wife gets it. Uh, we understand the frustrations with uh, property crime. We understand the frustrations with traffic. <coughs> I know we're all thinking about fireworks right now. I get it. I heard it too. Um, and what I'm telling you is this. We will always focus violent crime. Because we will always put people over things that we should. That should be our number one value. We will continue to do a good job of driving down violent crime. But as our calls for service increase, as our city grows, um, we're going to need more help. We're going to need more help. So, just so you know today, that area I talked about from Pinedale, out to McKinley and Marks, and all the way out here, you had eight patrol officers working today. You had eight. Plus one for your sergeant. So nine. Don't count me, I'm sitting in an office. I'm not out there in the street being able to call like those guys are. Today they dealt with a gentleman who was high on methamphetamine, who believed that there were three men that ran into his apartment to burglarize his apartment. They weren't there, they don't exist. They were only in his brain. As a result, he grabbed his gun and he went into his neighbor's house and told her to lock on the doors and shut off the lights. She fled the location and called us and told us. Hey, it's not about burglars, it's about the crazy man on methamphetamine with a gun in my house. It took the officers about an hour to handle the situation, and they were able to get him to peacefully surrender and come out. But all eight of your cops were there. All eight of your cops were there. So, I don't say that to say for me. That's not it. I'm not that kind of guy. Those of you that know me know I'm not that kind of guy. I will do the very best we can with what we have. And we will always respond to that crime first. But if we fall short, it's going to be on the property side. So I covet your help. I desperately need your help. I need you to send me your videos. I need you to call when the bad thing happens. I need you to be patient when it takes us a while to get out there. I need you to be understanding when our detectives call you back with a second question because they forgot it the first time. And I desperately need you to lock your doors and windows. If we can do those things and tell your neighbors and tell your kids and we can be on influence over to do those things, then we can maybe start to see those numbers reduce. People say, Farrell, why are they going up? Do we have just more criminals in our society than we used to? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. There's a lot of work in this state right now to release people from prison. And these folks have been in prison for a while and they don't know a different lifestyle. <coughs> People say, well, you catch them, what do you do with them? You throw them in jail? You don't throw them in jail. Jail's full. In order to get into jail, you got to have a violent felony to go to jail. If you've got a warrant from the judge, we'll take you down there. They may hold you for a few days. And we will book everybody we can. But my good buddy, Steve McCullough, is the captain of jail. He'll tell you, we've got a federal judge that's told us that this is the capacity. We can't put any more bodies in. And he can't build a new jail fast enough. You know, they built a new one. Have anybody seen it downtown? Right next to the old one, right? Pretty impressive construction. Huh? It's going to start to go up now. It'll be kind of fun to watch. But we're looking forward to the day that opens. We're looking forward to the day that opens. So, um, I want to thank you for being a part of this community. I want to thank you for showing up and caring. I want to thank you for being involved. And before I open it up to a few questions, I want to let you know that I promise to stay until after the end of the entire meeting and then stay longer than that to listen to your individual issues and concerns. I'm not going to run out the back door with a cookie in my hand. <laughs> I find it's much better to sit back there and eat several cookies while listening to you talk. A little better. Okay? Um, but before I do that and open up to questions, I do want to thank Darius and Granville for their generous contribution to breaking the chains. Uh, today, the chief of police and the DA and the head of breaking the chains at Darius at a press conference what Granville done it is significant sum of money, and I don't want to mention that because I'll get it wrong. A big chunk of change to breaking the chains, which is one of the nonprofit agencies that is working diligently to fight human trafficking and bring women that have been enslaved in the, in the grip.
there's a prostitution out of that lifestyle and back into normal life. Um, young girls. And uh, we really thank you for that support. We appreciate understanding how important that is in the Valley. And uh, I wouldn't expect anything else. So thank you very much for that. Thank you very much. Appreciate it very much. 
I'll be in the back. Thank you. Okay, um, uh, these guys need help. Uh, we need more cops on the street to be bring those numbers even down further, especially uh, property crime that uh, some of us in, in this neighborhood uh, and all neighborhoods across Fresno have, have, have experienced. And so th these guys need help on the city council. And Fresno uh, Police Officers Association and Chief Dyer endorsed the candidate for city council who also we are supporting. That this gentleman has a backbone, understands the public safety, understands economic mobility, and understands how to address infrastructure issues. And he even invited him to join us here today. Mike Kravasi, please join us for a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So 
we built the homes, you guys are actually paying for more police officers. So what's really important to me is that we have growth, but we also have smart and balanced growth. So when we grow, you have a councilman who's going to listen to all sides, talk to residents, listen to residents, make sure you know what's happening, that you're comfortable with what's happening, and then we grow appropriately. And that's what's really important to me. I don't do anything without your permission. A councilman gets elected by voters. I don't even exist if I'm your councilman without your permission. That's really, really important to me. Um, so my top three priorities, public safety, creating more jobs and economic development, and infrastructure. All those things require money, and all that comes from growing our community responsibly. So you guys are actually a big, big part of the solution that we have in our community. You are paying for the future of Fresno, but we have to do our job. And Veterans Boulevard, I'm so glad everyone in here knows about Veterans Boulevard, because when I'm walking off of like Fruit and Herndon, people are like, Veterans Boulevard? I have to tell them about how important Veterans Boulevard is going to be for Northwest Fresno. From day one, 35,000 cars a day are going to cross Veterans Boulevard. I was on a ride-along call. There was, unfortunately, a mass casualty accident on uh, Herndon 99. And uh, we were the closest to the call, but we had to go all the way around and cross Golden State 99 to get there. We were one of the last to arrive. So it's actually a public safety issue. Not only is it better for us, but we've got to get this thing actually completed. And if you go out there to see a sign, data completion 2019. Now I've been waiting a long time as a lifelong resident to get that thing done. I would like to push that through. Now I'm going to date myself. Anyone watch Columbo? <laughs> no, no, no. If you haven't watched Columbo, go to YouTube. It's about this LAPD homicide detective. Captain Ferry, you watch Columbo? Absolutely. OK. <laughs> Columbo was played by Peter Falk. I always tell people I'm like Columbo, because you're going to run into brick walls. He was very smart. Some people say he was annoying, but he's super persistent. And he pushes and pushes and pushes until he beats everyone down to submission and they, they, they give in. And that's kind of the way it works at City Hall. We have a lot of red tape out there. We have a lot of people that don't understand. They work for you. Our officers understand that. Captain Farah understands that. I understand that. And we need to make sure the rest of the city understands that too. We work for you, and I'm going to make sure to clean house at City Hall. Um, I will share you a, a, a fun story. So we have events when you run for office, and there's one uh, family, they actually live in Northwest Fresno. Uh, there's an officer that has sheepdog barbecue. You guys have heard of sheepdog barbecue? Okay, check them out. They make sauces and rubs, and they make really good uh, catering, tri tip, things like that. So we had an event, and we had sheepdog barbecue, and there's extra food. So we took it to the Northwest Precinct because there's a bunch of extra food. The officers will enjoy it. No response. We had an event, Rambo. We had Deli Delicious. Everyone loves Deli Delicious, right? A Northwest Fresno family owns that business too. Took it to the officers, no response. Last Saturday, we had an event. We had a bunch of donuts. We took it to the department, and they sent me letters. Thank you so much. They were ready for selling. Oh my God. Do you know why cops like donuts? Why? I work for a Um, but you know, it's true, I do have the support of our police officers, I have the support of our firefighters, I have the support of the Chamber of Commerce, I have the support of labor, I have the support of so many important groups in our community because I'm a hard worker and I listen. And the biggest thing for me, um, public safety is number one, and I am so grateful, Captain, I'm glad you're here. I've, I've had a chance to ride with so many of your officers, with the sergeants, a lot of the new officers. We're very, very lucky in Fresno. I know you, you watch the news and you hear these things, and that's other places. Fresno is a very different place. We are extremely lucky to have the kind of commitment and training that we have. They work with so little, and my goal is to be able to grow our economy, create more jobs so that we can increase the size of our fire department, our police department, and more services for you. So that's my spiel. I'm going to ask a question. What are my top three priorities? Who remembers that? I don't have a gift card, though. I'm sorry. I can't get it. <laughs> Does anyone remember my top three priorities? Public safety, number two, <laughs> jobs, and if there's, well, you got to see, there you go, and they're not even sitting. Okay. Are there any questions, or do you want to add anything, no, Darius? Any questions before we wrap up, because we've got two more things to go. Any questions for Mike? Don't forget, how many people vote? How long is that? So elections, if you get something in the mail next week.
probably actually, yeah, so this is an August 13th election. We don't actually have a council. And you know why this is a big issue? We just had our city budget come out, and there was no one to represent us to make sure we get our fair share. We pay a lot of taxes here. A couple months ago, the city was re, uh, redistributing our SB1 uh, gas tax dollars. We all paid for that. Guess which district in Fresno got the least amount of money? Northwest Fresno. Even though we pay the highest taxes, and that's very frustrating for me. While we have about a billion dollars in deferred maintenance problems in this city, which is a significant amount, half of that's for sidewalks and sidewalk repairs, we all pay the gas tax, we all should get our fair share of it. We have a lot of schools in Northwest Fresno that don't have safe routes to schools. You have to walk through a field because they're waiting for a developer to come in and develop in the land so they can build those, those paths. Kids can't wait. If you're, not, if you're not within a mile of the school, they're not gonna bus you there. You're gonna have to walk. These are things that are on my radar. These are things that I'm really concerned about. By the way, um, I have my cards here and I have literature if you want. My cell phone's on here. It's really important to be accessible. You can call me, you can text me. Don't prank call me. If you're gonna do it, make it fun. But uh, <laughs> I'm so grateful to be here. I'd be honored to bring your vote election day. My name's Mike Kabasi. <laughs> Captain Tara. Captain Tara. Uh, 